Mean Bean. AJ's stop was before Garth's. Come on over tomorrow, Garth told his friend. As soon as AJ left, Garth moved up to the front of the bus to get away from Bean. What part of sit down don't you understand, Garth? Miss Victoria sounded pretty irritated. Sorry, the cage wouldn't vent on the seat, he said. What on earth is in there anyway? Before Garth could answer, the bus stopped in front of his house. He pulled the blanket down around my cage and hurried down the steps. Mrs. Tugwell was waiting in the doorway of the house. She had wavy brown hair like her son. She had glasses and freckles like her son, too. She helped him set my cage up on the family room table. Garth's little brother, Andy, raced into the room. He had wavy brown hair, glasses, and freckles, too. Mine, he shouted. Nope, he's mine, at least for the weekend, said Garth. Tell Andy about Humphrey, Garth's mom said. He's a hamster, and you have to be nice to him, Garth explained. He got that right. I like ham, said Andy, rubbing his stomach. Yum, yum. I hopped onto my wheel to show Andy that a hamster wasn't anything like a ham. Wee, ham go round, said Andy. Garth's mother brought in a plate of peanut butter and crackers. Ooh, that smelled good. How was school, she asked. Okay, said Garth. But mom, could you say something to Bean's mom? He's mean to everybody on the bus. Martin Bean, Garth's mom sounded surprised. Why, he's always polite when I see him. Well, he's not polite any other time, Garth explained. He tripped a girl on the bus and called everybody names. That doesn't sound like Martin. What did the bus driver do? Nothing, Garth answered. Well, I think she should be the one to work things out, said Mrs. Tugwell. But you're friends with Mrs. Bean. I probably won't be if I complain about her son. Maybe if you were friendlier to him, he'd act nicer. Mom, Garth moaned. It's worth a try, his mom suggested. I had to squeak up. He's the meanest bean I've ever seen. Goodness, what's the matter with Humphrey, said Mrs. Tugwell. Maybe he doesn't like Marty either, Garth muttered. He's one smart guy. Shortly after Mrs. Tug Mr. Tugwell came home, Natalie arrived. She was the babysitter, but I didn't see any babies around for her to sit on. Garth wasn't a baby. Andy wasn't a baby, and certainly I was no baby. Natalie had black hair and wore a black shirt, black pants, and black j shoes. She had glasses with black frames. Her lips were bright red. Order a pizza, said Garth's dad, handing Natalie some money. I got some videos for the guys. Okay, said Natalie. Mind if I do some homework? As long as you get the boys in bed at nine, Mrs. Tugwell explained. Natalie glanced at my cage. What about the rat? I felt quite discouraged. I'd already been called a mouse and a ham that day. He's a hammer, Andy yelled. Oh, a hamster. How cute, said Natalie, leaning in toward my cage. Hi there, big boy. Whew. After a miserable, miserable week and a rough ride home, I suddenly felt a whole lot better. Later, the boys ate pizza and watched videos while Natalie read from a big, thick book. What's that? asked Andy, leaning over her shoulder. How come it doesn't have any pictures? College books don't have pictures. Andy wrinkled his nose. What's college? Natalie sighed. After you go to high school and graduate, if you want a good job like a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher, you have to go to college. I know that, Garth piped in. City College is right down the street. Mom took classes there last year. That's where I go, said Natalie. I'm studying psychology. The way she said it, that big word sounded like psychology. But the word on her book was spelled psychology. I wrote it down in my notebook later. I hope that word is never on a spelling test. In psychology, you find out what's inside people's heads. The babysitter reached for Andy's head. Ooey gooey brains, said Garth. Don't go in my head, screamed Andy, leaping off the couch. Natalie laughed. Not like that. Psychology teaches you how people think. Do you know what I'm thinking? Andy shook his head. I'm thinking it's time for bed, Natalie said. Nine o'clock. The boys both groaned. Not yet, Garth protested. Andy folded his arms. 
You can't make me, he said firmly. Surprisingly, Natalie sat back and smiled. I guess you're right. I can't make you. Andy's eyes practically bugged out of his head. Huh? Why don't you put on another video? We can stay up till your parents get back, the babysitter continued. It'll be fun. Yes, Garth exclaimed as he and his brother gleefully high-fived each other. But I was a little confused. Hadn't Mrs. Tugwell told her to get the boys in bed at nine? I was sure that Natalie had lost her mind. Garth settled back on the couch, but after a minute, his smile disappeared. When do you think Mom and Dad will be back? Natalie shrugged her shoulders. They didn't say. Won't they be upset if we're still up? Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Natalie answered with a mischievous grin. Andy looked worried. They'll be mad if we're not in bed. So, said Natalie, we'll still have time to watch more TV. Garth stood up and yawned loudly. I'm kind of tired. Me too, said Andy, stretching his arms. Natalie smiled. Well, if you really think so, okay. You two get ready for bed, and I'll be up in a minute. As the brothers raced upstairs, Natalie chuckled to herself, then leaned in toward my cage. And that, Humphrey Hamster, is what is called reverse psychology. You get people to do what you want by telling them to do the opposite. Reverse psychology. Remember, it's pronounced psychology. So that's how people's minds work. Just tell them to do the opposite of what you want them to do. You can make, sh you can sure learn a lot at college. You can learn a lot from a good babysitter too. The next afternoon, AJ came over to Garth's house to play. Mrs. Tugwell took Andy out to buy new clothes. Mr. Tugwell was paying bills in the kitchen. The boys were alone with me in the family room. Humphrey needs some exercise, said AJ. Let's take him out. Okay, you can watch him while I clean his cage. AJ gently took me out while Garth put on gloves and began to clean my cage. Both boys chuckled when he got to my potty corner. Everyone does, but he did a good job of cleaning it. While he worked, they talked. Any chance your dad can drive us Monday morning, asked Garth. AJ shook his head as he gently patted me. He has to leave for work real early. How about your dad? Garth shook his head. He always talks about how he had to walk to school and how lucky I am to ride a bus. I know, AJ sighed and set me down on the table. Watch it, said Garth. He set a row of big, tall books all around the edge of the table. We don't want Humphrey to get away. Maybe he'll be sick on Monday, Garth suggested. Are you kidding? He's the healthiest guy at school. Man, if he wasn't so big, I'd really give it to him, said AJ, making a fist. Me too, Garth agreed. It wasn't hard to figure out that they were talking about big, mean Marty Bean. I don't know why Miss Victoria always takes his side, Garth said after a while. He knows how not to get caught. The boys were silent again until Garth said, Miranda was getting a drink at the, wa at the fountain at recess and he came up and pushed her out of the way. The thought of someone pushing golden Miranda, an almost perfect human, really ruffled my fur. Did she tell, asked AJ. Yeah, he said he didn't do it, Garth explained. Said he wasn't anywhere near her. He said Kirk did it. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk almost got in trouble, so Miranda said it was all a mistake to get Kirk off the hook. Kirk the jerk, that's what Bean calls him, said Garth. He's got a name for everybody. That's why he doesn't have any friends. He stepped back and pulled off his rubber gloves. I think that's one clean cage. Great, I squeaked. But what are we going to do about Bean? Bean's a pretty funny name, AJ said with a chuckle. Bean brain, bean breath, said Garth. The boys started laughing. Bean bag, bean jeans, green bean, mean bean. Hey, that rhymes. Mean green bean. Mrs. Brisbane would be proud to hear them rhyming. I liked hearing them laugh. However, I was worried. Bean had said something about a mouse trap. The mere mention of those contraptions makes me shiver and quiver, and I didn't want to see anybody get tripped or pushed again. Ready to go back in, Humph Humphrey Dumpty? asked Garth. 
Yes, I squeaked, which for some reason made the boys howl with laughter again. Once I was back in the cage, the boys went up to play in Garth's room. That gave me time to think. Here were Garth and AJ, really good friends. They were nice to each other and stuck together. Marty Bean wasn't friendly to anybody, and he didn't have any friends. All my classmates liked Og, but when I offered to be his friend, he leaped at me in a very rude way. The business of friendship is not as easy as it sounds. I figured just before dozing off for a long afternoon nap. It was nice at Garth's house that weekend. The announcer on TV said it was cold, cold, cold outside, so the Tugwells stayed inside. The family popped popcorn. Did that smell good? And they waited TV, and they watched TV and snuggled on the couch. As happy as I should have been, I worried about Monday's bus ride. What I needed was a plan and maybe a little psychology. Are you sure the little guy won't catch cold? Asked Mrs. Tugwell as Garth was ready to leave for school on Monday. He's got a fur coat and I'll cover him, Garth assured her. I was plunged into darkness as he threw a blanket over the cage. Bye, ham, shouted Andy. Bye, Andy, I squeaked back. After all, a ham isn't the worst thing that a person can call you. Soon, I heard the squeal of the bus's brakes as it stopped in front of the Tugwell's house. All aboard, I heard Miss Victoria say. Find a seat. This cage is too big. Can't I sit up here, asked Garth. Do you see any empty seats up here, the bus driver replied. Get moving and keep moving. I was already queasy, just thinking about being. As Garth walked toward the back of the bus, looking for an empty seat, my cage swayed back and forth like a ship on a rough sea, which didn't help my stomach at all. Once we sat down, the bus started rolling. A block later, it abruptly stopped, and I slid across the floor of my cage. Ouch! All aboard, I heard Miss Victoria say. Find a seat, AJ. AJ walked back to our seat. Move over, he told Garth. I have to sit on the aisle, Garth replied. The cage won't fit in the seat. AJ crawled over Garth so he was close to the window. As he did, he bent down and whispered, Told you he'd be here. He's always here. As the bus lurched forward, my cage wobbled enough for the blanket to part so I could see a little. And what I saw was most unpleasant. Marty Bean sitting right next to us. Hey, Garth, is that your face or did somebody throw up on you? I could see the smirk on his face as he leaned in close, mere inches from my cage. Is that a cage, Bugwort, or is it your purse? Bean asked. He hooted at his own joke, even though it wasn't funny. It may have been cold outside, but I was getting pretty hot. Og might be unfriendly, but this Bean was even worse. I hadn't thought of Og all weekend. Now it all came back to me. The green skin, the repulsive grin, and the way he had leaped up and scared me. I had taken it from the frog, but I wasn't going to take it from this big bully. This was the time to act. I quickly opened the lock that doesn't lock and took a deep breath before leaping onto Martin Bean's leg. Stop being mean, Bean, I yelled at the top of my voice. It may have sounded like squeaking to him, but I made my point. Eek! Marty shouted. It's on me! A mouse! He threw his hands up in the air and screamed as I ran in circles on his leg. Help me! Somebody help! The faces around me were a blur and I was getting dizzy. As Marty continued to scream, the other kids began to laugh, softly at first, then louder and louder. He's only a little hamster, I heard Garth say as he scooped me up in his hands. He wouldn't hurt a flea. I liked being called a he a lot more than being called an it. It tried to bite me, Marty exclaimed. Everybody on the bus, including Beth and her first grade friends, laughed. What is going on back there, Martin? Asked Miss, Vic Miss Victoria called out as she slammed on the brakes. They, they threw a big rat on me. He was almost in tears. A giant rat. I think you'd better come up and sit behind me, the bus driver said. Now, she said had the girls in the seat behind her move as Marty shuffled to the front of the bus. Garth put me back in my cage. Thanks, Humphrey, he whispered. I don't know how you got out, but I'm sure glad you did. Always happy to help out a pal, I squeaked. The rest of the ride was uneventful. When Miss Victoria stopped the bus in front of Longfellow School, she made an announcement. 
This was the quietest ride we've ever had. From now on, Martin Bean, I'm assigning you to the front seat permanently. Marty didn't argue. He was too much he was in too much of a hurry to get off the bus. He could probably hear all the rest of the bus riders, including me, shouting, Hooray! No enemy can match a friend. Jonathan Swift, Irish author.